Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Let's talk about some gear changes that happened in 2023. Players are getting more and more keen on experimenting with their gear, testing new gear. Sponsors want to go after players. There's a lot of things happening in 2024. This will continue. We will have a lot of things happening in the off season where players are testing new setups, new string setups, new rackets, maybe new sponsors. There will be sponsor changes as always. Uh, so keep your eyes open for more and more content like this coming up in early 2024 as the tennis season gets going again but this year kind of started with uh, a few players testing on shoes roger federer is one of the co-owners and was using on shoes for towards the end of his career but we had three players testing on shoes with jack sock now he's actually more of a pickleball ball player. He's retired from tennis as far as I know. Just had a baby. So congrats, Jack, if you're watching this. Guy Monfils, he was testing on shoes for a bit. Now he's with, with Artengo shoes, as with his rackets and, and apparel. And Leila Fernandez was also playing for the first few months of the season with on shoes. Now she's with a brand. I don't really know what it is. I don't think it's a tennis shoe. Dutch Tim van Rijthofen had a bad year. I reported about his racket switch from... His ESO 98 with plenty of lead tape. He uses a lot of lead tape uh, to a Dunlop FX500, maybe a FX500 tour similar to Alexei Poprin. Still with a lot of lead tape in the hoop. And the team has had uh, huge elbow problems, was out for most of the year. And we wish him a, a healthy return. But these elbow problems are more and more frequent. Maybe he needs to reduce the amount of lead tape he has on the racket or, or something. But yeah, we're seeing more and more overuse. Um, gear related elbow issues also among the pros not only the rec players some wta news we had as well magdalene net she moved from her pure drive to an ease 100 the typical kind of sponsorship change sometimes the pro tries a racket they really like it they borrow it from a from a friend uh, and they feel like they want to make the switch sometimes it's the agent that kind of gets you know proposals from other brands sometimes they seek it out uh, there are different reasons for this it's hard without talking to the player to know exactly what prompted the switch uh, in this case, it makes sense in a way. It's two, two power rackets, not really a significant change in that sense. Pano Duarte, she moved from a V-Core to Artengo spin line, the Artengo TR930 Spin Pro. Uh, we have Jensen Brooksby, super talented American player, provisionally suspended due to uh, missing three of these doping controls. Similarly, similar to what happened to Swedish Michael Umer, who has now retired from the sport. We'll, we'll see if he is ever back, but he has a two-year ban from tennis. Uh, so it seems unlikely that he wants to jump on the bandwagon after losing all your ranking points and so on. In Jensen Brooks' case, it's a provisional ban for 12 months. He is appealing it, as far as I understand. Uh, before that, if we're talking gear, he was seen with Dunlop CX200 rackets, but it did look like the Wilson Blade 98, so more of a, of a paint. Dunlop has done this in the past. They've just basically taken the racket of of another manufacturer and painted Dunlop on it. And uh, yeah, Alicia Parks was one of those players that did that previously as well. So it's not unheard of. Tommy Paul did a pretty big change. Wilson Blade 98, more of a control racket to the Onyx V-Core 98, more of a spin and power racket. That is strings with a hybrid had a good year so it seemed to work out for him uh, some players have huge issues when they're switching around with with rackets and strings some players seem to really you know get in the groove quickly and uh, it might not be a big thing for them to, to change gear even on the pro level we had two players uh, going in between string setups quite a lot uh, ben shelton was heavily searched for his kind of uh, quite strong rise this year he was testing yonix politor rev politor pro different colors now the last thing i've seen is that he's using politor pro in the mains the yellow one and politor strike in the crosses the black one so uh, that's what i've seen maybe you have more information will be exciting to follow in 2024 Another player who's been on and off and all over the place with strings is, is Stefano Tsitsipas. Uh, 4G, full bed to 4G and got got and 4G, different in the mains and the crosses. Uh, he's had elbow issues as well, as you know. Got with all the power instead, full bed all the power. He's tried a little bit of everything. Uh, it's important to kind of have a you know confidence around your gear and that you feel like this is the right setup for me. Otherwise, uh, it can be tough to, to play relaxed tennis and, and just go for your strokes if, you, if you're really doubting that the gear is the, the best for you can put like kind of a big dent in your head and you, you're starting to second guess everything you're doing on the court Deminar, another 4g player he used 4g rough in a full bed has also moved to to 4g and got hybrid 
Uh, using GUT in the hybrid will make it more comfortable, give you a bit more power, slightly lower launch angle, and the feeling is quite nice, but not everyone likes it. Stefanos is not a huge fan of, of GUT in a hybrid, as far as I know from him, but sometimes you kind of have to go there because of the comfort issue of using a full bed of 4G, which is pretty st stiff string. We had Sebastian Corda's racket being a bit of a, of a riddle this year. It blacked out. This is a Blade 98 8019 string pattern. We don't really know for sure why is it blacked out. Is it a personal preference from him? Is it something that Wilson is cooking up in their lab? We will see if that question is answered in 2024. We will also see a new Blade, so a Blade version 9, uh, which would be exciting to test. So there's a lot of new reviews coming uh, in early 2024 here on the channel. Uh, Brandon Nakashima, talented American player, went from Pure Strike 98 to ESO 98. Uh, Yonix are snapping up some players left, right and center. This was a pretty good one from them. We'll see if Nakashima can can rise up the rankings. I mean, he has won the ATP uh, Next Gen Finals and uh, he is a very promising player. Medvedev, good year, but no Grand Slam titles. He had a very nice run after he switched strings. So he moved from his Racer Code White to Racer Soft, a new string with kind of a... It's not the best name maybe because it's not a soft string. Uh, it has properties that make it softer than you might think, but it's still not a, like a soft string. So the players might try it and they feel like, okay, this is not a soft poly at all. It's a medium firm poly, uh, but it's a nice one. We have made a review on the channel, so check that out. There was a lot of speculation around Alcaraz racket. Obviously, is he using it in stock form? As we have talked about before, it's highly possible that he's using lower swing weights. Many of the younger pros are using low swing weights, and even some of the older pros are using slightly lower swing weights these days. Some are below 330, Taylor Fritz, Dan Evans, and so on. So it's not unheard of that you can play a racket on this level also with a 325 swing weight. The question was more, is he using the Air VS version? That was the outgoing model. Or was he using the new 98? Uh, some players did some digging, but it's not 100% sure what it is. Holger Rune has been in the same boat. And we have another very strong, talented French player, Arthur Fils, who's also using the Aero 98, whether it's the VS or, or 98, uh, we don't really know. Corentin Motin, hothead from France, issues with his wrist this year, had to slice a lot on the backhand, or, or predominantly for most of the season, he was actually slicing. And he hit a lot of underhand serves as well, really mixing it up. Talented guy, loses his mind sometimes. Uh, and he made a switch from the Wilson Pro Open Pro Stock to the Technifiber TFX1 which is another power spin racket and it seems to have worked out well for him it's always fun when you see players being creative on the court and he's a creative player sometimes he hits a one-handed backhand despite being a two-handed backhand player and underhand serves and so on marcus giron uh, he made a switch from the onyx v core 95 that he's been using for quite a while to the percept 97d the new racket line from yonex that replaces the v core pro so it's the control line the 97d is the 1820 pattern so quite a dense pattern for more control we haven't yet tested the 97d we've tested the 100d and the other rackets in the percept lineup so that's next on the list so those were some racket changes we're going to talk more about pro player specs and so on we had some pro player specs we haven't talked about on the channel so we'll get into that but these were the changes that i noted and maybe there are some things that I missed, but uh, hopefully this year we will see some more exciting stuff. It's always fun to see when a pro changes gear, whether it's a string or a shoe or a racket, how that affects their game. Because it's all kind of very strongly connected to your, to your mental game, uh, whether that's going to you know give you a boost or whether it's going to give you lots of doubt if you start losing and so on. That's it for this video. If you need help with rackets, there are a lot of recommended rackets, strings, and other gear like bags on tennisnerd.net. There's lots of information there. There's also a possibility to get a personal consultation via email. Uh, that service is up via tennisnerd.net as well. And if you like the work I do and want to support the channel and the website, you can become a Patreon member where you get exclusive content every week. Same for YouTube. You can also join YouTube as a member. That's it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play sometimes.